Hi everybody, this is Gatsad. Uh, for today's uh, clip, I'm doing something that I don't often do, which is sort of brainstorm on camera because I thought of a problem as I was walking uh, back from lunch uh, with my wife and kids. Uh, and I started, as I often do, just uh, brainstorming some ideas. And I thought, you know what, this might make for a good, sad truth. And so here we are. Uh, some of you may know that uh, my first degree, I studied uh, mathematics and computer science. And in my computer science courses, three of the courses that uh, had a profound effect on me, although I must say, you know, my whole training in mathematics and computer science was absolutely wonderful. Uh, so a course in artificial intelligence, uh, a course in analysis of algorithms, and a third course uh, on formal languages, which arguably in my long career as a student, uh, 10 years as a student through my various degrees. This is probably the most mind-blowing course that I've ever taken and certainly the most uh, truly, it, it borders on being mystical, some of the, the knowledge that you learn in formal languages, so Turing machines and stuff like that. Many of you may not know what I'm talking about. Uh, I wish I had the book with me. It's at my office at my university, the book that we had actually used in the course uh, with all of my little writing in the book. Now when I open that book and I look at all of the mathematical symbols, wow. In any case, uh, one of the things that we learn in my uh, math and computer science uh, courses is how to classify problems using particular nomenclature. So for example, a problem can be known as undecidable. Uh, or you, you've got, when it comes, for example, to certain um, search problems, whether a, 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 a search problem is NP uh, or NP complete or NP hard. This refers to, if you like, a classification of whether a problem is solvable within a particular, you know, a polynomial time, uh, whether given the particular sets of axioms that you're operating in within the particular deductive system that you're operating in, you could not solve a particular problem. So think of Gödel's incompleteness theorem. This is some some of the most unbelievably deep uh, uh, manifestations of human thinking that one could imagine. So Alan Turing, Gödel, and some of these hardcore theoretical computer scientists, uh, their work is truly mind-blowing. So this is the background to what I'm going to talk about next. So as I was walking with my wife uh, from uh, having had lunch, I saw a woman that I've often seen around she suffers from what appears to be a, you know, the neurodegenerative disease or a muscular muscular degenerative disease. So she's always in this, uh, you know, she's very constrained in her. She's in a wheelchair, and of course, I always feel very bad because, well, for obvious reasons. And I was thinking, well, you know, there are so many medical ailments out there, so many maladies, uh, and of course. Me- so many are unsolved yet, right? We don't, we don't know how, what causes it. We don't know how to cure it. And so if you took all of these maladies, I wonder if there is a way, and I don't, ha- I don't pretend to have the answer for this. This is really an opportunity for everybody to weigh in. I'm just sort of engaging in stream of uh, conscience, consciousness uh, you know, thinking here. Uh, I wonder if there's a way to use some sort of framework, some sort of taxonomy to classify why particular problems, practical problems, medical problems, this is not theoretical mathematics or theoretical computer science, why the problems are not solved. Uh, So for example, we might argue that until germ theory came along, well, you know, people had a completely wrong perception as to what causes many of the diseases that we otherwise couldn't see the culprit. With the advancement of germ theory and then with the advancement, the catching up of methodological tools that allow us to see, say, the electronic microscope, then we're able to break through certain problems that were intractable, if only because we didn't have the right theory or didn't didn't have the right methodology. So that's one class of reasons why we may not have understood uh, the solution to a problem. Another possibility is, think about, for example, if you're trying to brute search through the decision tree of a chess board, the a chess game. This is something that I studied in, in, in my artificial intelligence course. Well, if you actually sat there and exhaustively searched fully through the decision tree of a 
chess game, you'd be searching that tree for longer than I think the, the universe has existed. So in other words, you can't apply a brute search strategy. The com computational complexity is simply too great. So might a second reason be that many diseases are so multifactorial, they involve so many interacting combinations of forces that simply we have computational limitations in our ability to isolate the factors, examine what percentage of the mechanism is due to a particular factor, which factors are operative versus which are not. And so that might be, if you like, a second class of reasons why uh, we're unable to solve problems. And then I, I was trying to think, you know, what might be a framework that one could use similar to what I talked earlier, similar, similar to what Goodell did with his incompleteness theorem, similar to what when we talk about the NP complete versus NP hard, uh, you know, problems, when we talk about uh, the, the, you know, the, the unsolvable, or I can't remember the exact term, what is the term, uh, the undecidable problems. Can we come up with a similar classification for practical problems? And I didn't do a, a literature search. This was just something that sort of came to mind. Uh, I wonder if any of you have any thoughts. I'm not sure if uh, my uh, letting you into my mind here is of any value to you, but I'm sure that there are some really clever folks, computer scientists and others who might have been studying some of these things. Please share your comments, your thoughts. Uh, this is what I do all day. If I'm not working on a book, if I'm not working on a paper, I'm walking around and just thinking, coming up with ideas, trying to make connections, and so on and so forth. Being an academic is certainly a stressful job, but a, a wonderful job. It allows me to spend all day navigating through wonderful intellectual landscapes. In any case, I wish you all a great weekend. Uh, I'm going to work a bit more on the book now and then try to watch and see if Lionel Messi cannot break my heart. Cheers, everybody.